Joining us now is a space expert, the astronaut Alvin Drew. Join us to answer your most burning question. First of all, nice to meet you. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Nice to meet you. Okay, I want to start with you from uh, what are your expectations about the IEC 2024? What do you see while you're here? Well, it's been great seeing all the new offerings out here from the different large constellation satellite operators and also the folks out there with those commercial low Earth orbit destinations uh, who have places to, for both NASA and private organizations to go to something like the International Space Station um, as we retire the International Space Station. So it's been, it's been fascinating to see the future of where we're going to be in the coming decade. Nice. So the main theme of the Congress is sustainability. Yes. What is your and NASA vision about that? So NASA has a vision where it wants to operate sustainably in space. Um, a few weeks ago they said I was the director of that space sustainability um, division to go do that. So it's taken on a very personal meaning for me, even though it's been important to me for a long time before that operates in space and so we would like to not be in a place that is not sustainable you know, it it's becomes it becomes dangerous to work there then we can't do our research we can't do our exploration um, otherwise we also have to do things like make investments in armoring ourselves from de debris strikes and other things like that so it can make it prohibitive the other part though that we had not occurred to us recent until recently was that everything that NASA does because we're there first sets the precedent for others to follow we should be doing these things up front so as we go back to the moon how do we behave at the moon in a sustainable way? As we go on to Mars, what are the things we should be thinking about such that you know, 25 years now when other people are at Mars, um, that we've already established the, the, the best ways to behave responsibly and sustainably before they get there, long before it becomes a problem. Yeah, and now it's time for your must burning question. What's the moment in your life when you, uh, from like being a child and dreaming about being an astronaut, decided to uh, do that as your profession and your job? Okay, so I first had the inclination, like most kids, that I wanted to be an astronaut. I was watching the uh, Apollo 11 landing and looking at Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon. And I remember asking my dad, what kind of job should I have where I could have the kind of money to go do what they're doing? And he said, they're not, paying to do that, They're, somebody's paying them to go walk on the moon. You've got to be kidding, that's a job? Um, like, how do I get that job? Um, he says, well, you become an astronaut. Well, um, up to that point, I wanted to be an airline pilot since I was four and a half, now I'm six and a half, and I'm in this quandary about my career. Uh, should I become a, a pilot or an astronaut? And he goes, you can do both those things. Uh, and so there I was, I was so a, a five and a half year old kid decided my career for me. Hello, I wanted to know what was your favorite part of the experience? My favorite part of being in a space flight, you have to remember that I was a test pilot. I love flying airplanes, I like you know, thundering loud jets, so for me, it was always lift off. You know, six and a half million pounds of thrust, all those rocket motors lighting up, and just being shoved down in your seat for this wild ride up into space. Um, you know, I would be happy to come back down, put my money back into the machine and, and do it all over again. How you have made your effort and how you have studied and try to open the gates to the astronaut. It's strange, once I decided I wanted to be an astronaut, you know, going to school where I just didn't really like math a whole lot, um, I was no longer just studying math for the sake of studying math, which didn't inspire me. I was knew that astronauts had to know math, so at that point I was six years old and training to become an astronaut, and, and in its own way, that was correct. Your training to become an astronaut begins decades before you get to your ap astronaut application. My question to you is, how would you help young students promote themselves in the space industry? So if you're thinking about getting into the space sector, first off, understand it's not just engineering, it's not just science. For every organization that operates in space, including NASA and commercial companies, uh, we have people who work finance, who work business, um, who work the technical aspects, who work the management part of it. There's also engineers, there's also scientists, there's people who operate, who are pilots, um, who are crew members, uh, for people who work in our mission control centers. All those things out there are different ways you can operate in space. So um, just, just figure out what it is that excites you and see how you can bring that to space as opposed to seeing a, how to shoehorn yourself into space somehow. Um, there's very few jobs out there where you cannot apply it to the space industry and go be part of it. So please, we need you.